Hello everyone! Welcome to my first YouTube video. Today I'll show you how I made Sunako from one of my all-time favorite anime series, Yamato Nadesh Koshichi Henge or The Wallflower. Without further ado, let's begin! Making Sonako's chibi face is the easiest since she doesn't have any facial features. So you may opt to use a silicone face molder or you can just make a half sphere. Next, I'm gonna work on her skull friend. I'm molding this piece of white clay into an upside down egg shape and using my thumb, I'm making an indentation on the lower half of the clay to make a space for the mouth. With any flat tool, go ahead and sculpt the cheekbones. Then with my ball tool, I'm making the eye sockets. Feel free to redo the previous steps to help your cold porcelain retain the details. It's one of the cons of using air dry clay but I personally think it's just a minor nuisance. It's something to consider though if you're new to claying. As you can see, I poked two holes for the skull's nose and now I'm using my knife tool to sculpt the teeth. Wait for it to become at least 25% cured or dried before painting. Here I'm just using black acrylic paint for the skull's details. Sonako likes creepy things so the skull doesn't require precise painting. And instead of tracing the lines for the teeth, I simply cover the mouth area with watered down acrylic paint and used a wet wipe to remove the excess. Despite all that, the skull still looks a bit flat, so I'm using soft pastels to give him more dimension. Next, we're going to make Sunako's pants. You can simply use red clay, but I remember her pants to be maroonish, so I combined red and black clay. I rolled it into a log using an acrylic block to make it even but I also made sure that the ends are a bit thinner since we're folding it in half to make her legs. I'm gonna bend the folded side since she is sitting in our reference photo. I also went ahead and posed her knees and legs. Making the skull first really helped me measure how far apart Sonako's legs and feet needed to be. We are now going to make her upper body, so take a piece of white clay and roll it into an egg shape. Then use a ball tool to make an opening at the top and bottom of the egg-shaped clay. These are where we're going to connect the head and legs later on. I'm also using the ball tool on the sides for her arms. Before connecting any two parts, always remember to apply glue for a stronger hold. And we are done with Sonako's body. Just use a needle tool to make her clothes look more realistic. Mm -hmm. 
When making figures, don't forget to put an armature wire to support the chibi. Here I used a small piece of skin tone clay for her almost non-existent neck and I used a pair of scissors to remove the excess. Just use any tool to smooth it out. Let's now move on to Sunako's head. As armature for the back of her head, I just used scrap clay so it's not as soft. I tried my best to smoothen it with a rolling pin but it's going to be covered by her hair anyway. When that's done, go ahead and connect her head to the body. Once again, I'm using armature wire so that her shoes could have something to hold on to. For her shoes, I'm just using two pieces of oval-shaped white clay. As my chibi's face was drying, I realized that I'm not satisfied with her face shape. I want it to look chubbier, so this is my bad. You can totally skip this step, but you might be able to use this technique in other projects. Just gradually add small pieces of clay and smoothen it with your finger and water or my personal favorite, cotton and rubbing alcohol. You may also use other tools such as plastic tools, rubber shapers, cotton swabs, etc. Just make sure that it's wet. I honestly don't know what this technique is called but I've used it a lot. Next, I'm making two logs of white clay for her arms and as you can see, I'm rolling both pieces at the same time using an acrylic block to make sure that they're the same size. Once again, I'm using a ball tool to make space for her hands. Connect the hands and arms to the body. Oh, and don't forget to glue her hands to the skull too. Last but not the least, we're going to make her hair. Making a chibi's hair is one of my favorite things to do but it can be quite tricky sometimes. So take your time in measuring the length of the clay, keeping in mind that cold porcelain shrinks while drying. As you can see, I used a pair of scissors to trim her hair before adding texture to the clay. Chibi Sunako's hair has little to no strands but I didn't want it to look plain so I cut little triangles at the bottom. I obviously took my time with her, so much that the clay was already drying and wouldn't stick to her head anymore but it was easily solved by adding glue. I repeated the same steps for her bangs. Again, I'm using the alcohol on cotton technique and a rolling pin to make the base of her hair and bangs look seamless. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I may be biased, but I think she's super cute. I'm just going to put her on a round wooden base covered with clay. To finalize everything, I'm just applying a little bit of pink soft pastel on her cheeks to make her look cuter and livelier. I also drew in her tiny mouth and added more details to her skull friend. I started this figure using this reference photo from Google Images, but I knew something was off, so I had to rewatch the episode this image was based on. And true enough, the skull designs were different. And now, Sunako-chan is finished! Thank you for watching! I hope you learned something from this video. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more videos like this and let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. See you!